Hi, my name is Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Organics, where we grow cool plants. And today we have the honor and privilege of having David Burke of The Fig Hunter here in our backyard home orchard, where we're going to be discussing grafting techniques. He's going to share his method, which is more of the traditional um, method, whereas I'm going to be sharing the method I've been using for, I think, close to 30 plus years using fishing string and a paper towel method. And I know that there's growers across the country and around the world that have been using my method successfully. And I'm gonna to explain to you just why um, my method works and we're gonna watch the Fig Hunter demonstrate and introduce more flavors of deliciousness. Specifically, we're gonna be dealing with figs, but these techniques will also work on your citrus, on your apples and peaches and plums and pomegranates and so much more. And the primary reason that a lot of people graft is so you can enjoy a lot of related delicious flavors in the footprint of a single tree instead of having to plant, as in this example, 10 fig trees, which would probably hog up all of your backyard space. You can just plant one and enjoy 10 flavors from black, brown, red, honey varieties, berry varieties, and ornamental varieties. And so, um, just one of the incentives to really get to grafting this season. And this is, here we are in February, one of the best times of the year for grafting. And we're going to get to the reason why in just a minute. Hope you enjoy. Thank you, David Burke, for joining us. And, um, and please tell us a little bit about the Fig Hunter before we get started. Well, we're a family business that uh, collects and researches new varieties of hybrids for figs. I mean, basically. We grow them out, we figure out the best of the best, and we provide them to the public. We've been doing that now for roughly five years, and as of this trip down, we're at 1,925 different varieties, which really is amazing. So here we are visiting um, Ivy Organic backyard in their fig tree, and we're gonna get to put some of our varieties, which are the best of the best, onto the fig tree so he can share with his family and with you guys next year and the great fig giveaway that's awesome and i just want to make sure you guys understand the significance of what the fig hunter has done and some of you may remember a few years ago i visited with floyd zager of zager genetics with dave wilson nursery and got to basically taste some of the best tasting stone fruit trees on the planet Floyd Zager has been hybridizing fruit trees for well over 40 years and basically planting out about 50,000 seeds per year and testing them out over 10 years and sharing with the public only about two to four of his best varieties every single year. And once David and Priscilla Burke discover these wild figs, whether they be anywhere in California or across the country on their adventures, they map them out, they catalog it, they take cuttings and then they grow it out in their orchard farm property in Northern California, as they call their Fictopia property. And they are sharing their best varieties out of this now close to 20,000 wild fig varieties with all of us. And we're proud to share in, this is now our sixth free fig cutting giveaway. For more details about the sixth annual free fig cutting giveaway, go to ivyorganics.com for details. And also you can learn more about the fig hunter fig varieties and a lot of the goods that they also make at thefighuntershop.com and be sure to use the promo code IVO10 for 10% off the entire store. So about five or six years ago, we grafted together the Grandpa Saman green fig tree, which is in the opposite corner of our backyard orchard. And on it, we grafted 10 flavors of figs. Today, I've started grafting on several varieties onto now the Hilda's Honey Green fig tree. And I've introduced some of um, my groups that have contributed to this year's annual free feed cutting giveaway and some of them insisted that I graft these varieties. So these are some of the most coveted of the varieties. I wrote for the Fig Hunter, I've added 270. Do you recognize what that number is? Of course, that's Jolly Rancher. So Jolly Rancher I grafted on two times just to make sure for sure it takes onto the tree. We also got 455. Which is my wife's favorite and a family favorite. It's Amen Citron. It's that big luscious fig that just should not exist. And has citrus notes, which is, I've never really experienced a fig with citrus notes. So it does make it a one of a kind and it is 
one of America's most popular fig varieties. And um, again, this being our sixth free fig cutting giveaway, it, whatever cuttings I have, they're usually gone in a matter of minutes. It, it's it's surprising, um, you know, these fake cuttings that got introduced to us only a few years ago and our audience, you know, was somewhat interested. Now they're on fire with both of these varieties. Um, another one that Dr. Daniel or soon to be DDS in Texas offered um, the Tia Pena variety. So that's on here behind me. And then Paul Talley of the California Rare Fruit Growers. He's been contributing to our giveaway for the last four or five years and has some of the most unique varieties. And he recommended um, that I graft on here the Martinica Ramada. Um, I've also got the Panache Tiger. And what's unique is the Panache Tiger is obviously a green fig with white stripes. Martinica Ramada is also another tiger variety of fig that ripens purple. Um, and then we have Cardinelli, um, as well as the De La Senora. And then the last but not least is one that I did a fig um, tasting on at his property about six or eight months ago. And Monstrous jumped off the page for me um, as it just tasted so much like strawberries. And even though the strawberry vert, um, the Monstrous was the most strawberry tasting fig I've ever had. And that had me hooked. And so we've grafted that variety here behind me. Well, I'm gonna start off with the um, grafting lesson using again, the fishing twine and um, damp paper towel method. And then I'm gonna give the floor to David and he's gonna share his grafting tips for us as well. Well, let's get started. So if you take a look, I've already pruned this branch where I'd usually want to keep it. So you can see I'm basically following the nodes. There's a node right here, about a quarter inch above it is where I've cut. And usually you want to cut it at an angle to make sure water doesn't accumulate. But because the branch is off to the side, it's already going to basically make sure that water is not accumulating on the top as it otherwise would maybe on a surface such as this, um, which we're going to discuss in just a moment. So right above the node is the way you'd want to normally prune it. But if you're gonna graft onto it, I would usually prune the node just below so that when we cut into it, we will have less resistance from the node for grafting. So now we're basically gonna have a smoother surface to cut into to now insert the grafting wood, which is known as a scion. For the fig cutting giveaway, we've been giving away, you know, labeled figs such as this one here it's called scott's yellow um over here is basically the size of the cuttings this one here is a tiger if you take a look you can see the stripe variegation on here but since we have the fig hunter here we're gonna graft his variety known as the 278 do you want to let us know again what this flavor is going to be well 278 is an amazing fig but as it starts to dry it takes on a, a bluish tint and it, so it's Fico Azurum, which means blue fig. So what I'm doing is I'm basically creating a wedge that is going to be inserted into the branch that we've prepared, which is going to serve as the rootstock. Again, the tree behind me is known as the Hilda's Honey Green Fig. And we've now got the scion wood prepared. The cambium tissues consist of the xylem and phloem. The phloem basically carries the sugars from the top of the plant down to the rest of the system. And then the xylem is basically responsible for carrying the water from the roots and up the tree trunk to the leaves. So kind of like the veins and the arteries in the body. All that exists just below the bark. Not in the center wood, not in the exterior bark, but right underneath the bark. You can kind of see that green line. So we're going to now insert that into this branch notice also that this scion which is the flavor we're grafting on is much thinner than the root stock that we're using here and that's no big deal we're going to keep our hands away in case the grafting knife slips and we're going right down the center about a half an inch to an inch and now that we've split it, again, what we're trying to do is make sure that we've got the cambium from the scion wood in contact with the cambium of the root stock. So we're, if you insert it right down the middle, it's a guaranteed fail because the cambium tissue from both sides are not touching the scion wood, which is up above. So what you're gonna wanna do 
and I'm gonna keep the knife, usually I wouldn't keep it in there. I'd usually put it on one side and kind of leverage it like that. And I can slide it in right there. So the next thing I'm gonna do is wrap this and basically secure the scion wood onto the rootstock to ensure that the cambium tissue remains aligned with one another and healing will typically take place within about 10 days and growth will shoot out within about three to six weeks, especially with the warmer weeks up ahead. Here we are in Southern California, last week of February, and within the next week or two, this entire fig tree is gonna be pushing out a lot of green growth. So as the life basically returns up the tree trunks to the branches, all of the grafted unions are gonna be um, pushing out a lot of new growth. But in the event, for example, a bird were to land on the scion wood and move it like so, but a graph like this could also work as well. The reason being is that again, the cambium tissues from one side is in contact with the cambium from the other side and there can still be grafting success even if it's a line like that. Instead of pointing it down, because this is just gonna completely wreck the flow and the direction of the branch, I'm gonna reverse it and we're gonna do this experiment and see what's gonna happen. So the next thing is to secure the graft in place and I kind of showed you where it should be aligned, but we're kind of doing an extra experiment here and seeing if this is gonna work out. And what I'm doing now is basically securing the scion to the rootstock using fishing nylon or fishing string. So having researched and understanding that when it comes to grafting, that the scion wood needs to remain moist while the healing process is happening. What I started doing, again, this is when I was 13, 14 years of age, is simply take a paper towel, add some moisture and wrap it. The scion wood's gonna die due to desiccation or simply drying out. Why not offer the grafted wood that had added moisture so that you're nursing it while that healing happens? And so we added that damp paper towel, put a bag over it, go back with my string of choice. And we're basically gonna trap that moisture within, like so. And that basically concludes the paper towel grafting method as I've coined it several years ago. And that for me has resulted in the highest grafting success that you can enjoy with your cocktail fruit trees that you experiment with in your backyard orchards. So instead of the cleft graft, which would go straight down the middle, we're going to, or just peeling the bark off and putting something in called the rind graft. We're combining the both of them and we move a little bit to the outside, typically one third of the diameter of the scion, like we have here, we do a cut and then we will peel this bark. So now that we have uh, peeled the bark back, we cut out the wood and you've taken out a third of that wood, which we're gonna replace with the scion wood. So now we're gonna prepare the scion real quick. And just like uh, Charles was showing, we do cut a somewhat wedge. We do add a little ledge to ours. It doesn't have to be a big ledge. You'll see here. And that's gonna sit on top here. It just adds a little bit more stability. See, very small. Now on the other side, we will expose the cambium layer. And this theory goes on the fact that when this bark touches that cambium layer, it'll also start to weld itself back together. And um, it's a forgiving graft. None of this is, it doesn't look perfect. And that's why it works for us, I guess. And in a little bit closer to spring in March, this is a very fast graft. Use our parafilm. to secure it. And then after that, after that's secured, this is just a temporary um, to help. I'll take black tape, black electrical tape. I really like it instead of the twine because it stretches and it just seems to 
work with my hands, I guess is the best way to explain. And it's proven accessible. And you can stretch that pretty tight. At the same time as the plant starts to grow and starts to warm up, the adhesive in the black electrical tape will unravel. It also keeps, in our area where it rains during the winter significant, it'll kind of keep that union waterproof, which for me is important. The last thing I'll do is, or the first thing, depending on what stage is I'll put a little of this tape above this oh I'll make sure it's wet we just talked just so, so it's like Charles method I'll make sure that's wet and damp and then I will put some parafilm tape over the top Now we have a roughly about a 95% success rate with this method. And um, something else I will do is I'll put a couple cuts to help slow the sap, especially if it's an in-ground tree, to give that graft a little bit of time to heal. And those will heal quite rapidly. Just making sure here that in case the latex or the it pulls back up, it doesn't get trapped underneath any tape here and can bleed out. And that's the fig hunter graph method. Like I said, it's fast, it's easy. We have a high success rate with it. The fact that you're just not only trying to touch one side of the cambium layer, but you have that bark that's touching another side more surface area it works so the general rule when grafting your deciduous fruit trees such as this fig but also applies for your apples your peach trees your almonds your cherries and so much more is after the last chance of frost has passed your grow zone for us here in los angeles last chance of frost day is the last week of january so that last week of January, early February is an excellent window for grafting your dormant scions onto your sleeping rootstock. At the same time, as your chance of frost date passes, this is an excellent time to also be feeding your plants. We've explained this chart over the last few years that in the winter months, when the light hours are the shortest and the temperatures are a little cooler, the plants go into a dormant um, phase and the plant's metabolism is at the lowest point of the year. But as spring approaches and the light hours increase, the plants begin to wake up, metabolism increases, but your fertilizer dose, and a lot of people say spring is the most important time to fertilize. Yes, it is, but only at about half the recommended dose. The most important time for feeding your plants is in the summer. June is the longest light hours and the warmest temperatures, even though there's usually hotter temperatures to follow, but the days begin to get shorter after the first day of summer. And that's the reason I wrote May. May is the most important time for organically feeding your plants to make sure that the fertilizers in your soil, the soil biology, which includes the earthworms, beneficial bacteria and mycorrhiza are breaking down that organic fertilizer into available elements that'll be readily available by June for your plants when the plant's metabolism is peaking. Ivory Organics all-purpose fertilizers, super blend and premium blend products contain all six plant macronutrients. Almost all the other fertilizers focus on just NPK, which is your nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. But plants also require all six plant macronutrients for optimal plant health, development, fruiting success, and so much more. Those other three elements include magnesium, which is the heart of the chlorophyll molecule, sulfur, which is important in the metabolic processes of the plant, and then calcium. Calcium's in the cell wall of the plants and constitutes almost up to 30% of the plant's weight. By making sure your plants have all six plant macronutrients available, your plants are gonna be off to an excellent start and you can enjoy your best growing season. The differences between the super and premium blend all-purpose fertilizers is that the super blend has a higher NPK 
in addition to having azomite, which is simply crushed volcanic rock to offer your plants a lot of the micronutrient nutrition as well. We're simply gonna add some product to the root zone. Once you water the product, you can see it goes right below the leaf mold. You got some wood chips that'll go right between the wood chips down to the topsoil where the earthworms, beneficial bacteria and mycorrhiza will get to begin breaking down the organic fertilizers to make it readily available for your plants. So a lot of commercial growers will say the day you plant a tree is the day you whitewash with Ivory Organics. The Ivory Organic 3-in-1 Plant Guard offers protection from damaging summer sunburn, winter sun scald, insects, and rodents. The way the product works is it has seven natural oils that are natural insect and rodent repellent oils, which include castor, cinnamon, clove, garlic, peppermint, rosemary, and spearmint. The base ingredients include traditional methods of limestone and clay and in addition to milk protein such as casein which helps create a strong bond which is about as long lasting as latex paint for gardeners that are using latex paint on their trees paint is designed for your home and is designed to last 100 years or more when you put on your plants within about a year or two all that paint is in your soil indefinitely ivory organic is armory certified and gives organic commercial orchards an organic alternative for accomplishing all of these benefits for optimal plant health, longevity, fruiting, and the Ivory Organic 3-in-1 Plant Guard color white is the most popular choice and naturally reflects the most amount of light and therefore heat. But Ivory Organic 3-in-1 Plant Guard also is available in colors brown, green, gray, and grayish. And today I just want to demonstrate these colors on the multi-grafted fig tree. And let's start with color white. The goal when applying the product is you want to protect the heart of the tree, which I always define as the tree trunk and lower branches. And if there's any damage to the extremities of the tree, such as wind burn or sunburn, you can always prune those branches off, but you wouldn't have harmed, again, what I define as the heart of the tree. If the heart is damaged, then you've definitely shortened the overall health and life of your tree. All plants, especially in that first year of life and until they develop a canopy that can naturally protect the understory, should be whitewashed and again another mindful consideration is when doing summer pruning that's another excellent time to also consider whitewashing your trees if you take a look up here you can see there's a pruned branch from about a year ago and you can see how the pith has collapsed upon itself this is an entryway for beetles termites and disease you're going to want to seal that again with the ivory organics the cool thing about our product compared to latex and tar based products is that it dries on porously allowing moisture and nutrients to pass if it trapped moisture like a latex paint then the covered surface can potentially rot and actually harm the tree this is the healthier alternative and protection for your pruned branches and once these grafts heal within the next about three to six weeks, we can also protect it with the Ivory Organic 3-in-1 Plant Guard as well. So I'm now gonna demonstrate the difference between the Ivory Organics 3-in-1 color white with the Ivory Organic 3-in-1 color grayish. And again, colors are available in brown, green, gray, and this here is grayish. I think it's an excellent complement to the fig tree. Take a look at how well this goes on. A lot of people ask, again, which color is best? Obviously white reflects the most light and heat, but regardless of the color, you're offering the bark protection. And ultimately what you're trying to protect is the underlying cambium tissues, which transport the water and nutrients up and down the plant. So we did it. The paper towel method, the fig hunter method. And now we're gonna see what works, but I kind of gave myself a handicap obviously with putting my graft in at a 90 degree angle or 45, it's not completely aligned, but I hope to share with you that success in the upcoming about three to six weeks. So to see our grafting success story, be sure, especially for those of you that are new, that you subscribe and hit the push bell notification on the Ivory Organics YouTube channel. Be sure to also follow and subscribe at the Fig Hunter YouTube channel. You can also find them on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter and you also have now a forum for fig enthusiasts as well. They can also join and follow you where? Oh, growing figs in containers. Growing figs in containers. And all of those links you can find in the video description below. Simply hit it, get connected, 
and be a part of our growing world. As always, keep growing with Ivory Organics and wishing you all happy gardening.